My name is Brian Etheridge. I'm the technical leader for Wayne's Environmental Services. Today we're going to be talking about how to properly calibrate a spray system. The first step in a calibration process is to determine the volume of water you want to apply using your sprayer. This is called the system output or flow. The size of the nozzle being used ultimately determines the system flow. Your engine, pump, and hose system without a nozzle has a specific output or flow at a specific engine speed and pressure. The nozzle allows you to change the system output and flow based on the application need. When selecting a nozzle, you have to understand what droplet size and water output is needed for the application. Always check your label for the minimum recommended water volume to be applied with a product. Since you do not typically control your customer's irrigation and when they water the product in, this is a critical choice. Pre-emergent herbicides applied with higher quantities of water have a better chance of penetrating the grass canopy and depositing on the soil surface. Herbicides that remain in the canopy can be degraded by sunlight and even possibly removed by mowing. For this situation, we'll select a four gallon per minute nozzle. It is also important to note, the smaller the droplet size, the better the chance you have for drift to occur. This can cause damage to plants adjacent to the treatment area. Next, perform a bucket check to determine the flow rate of your pump and nozzle combination. You can purchase a pre-marked container or graduated bucket, or you can make your own. To make your own, simply use a measuring cup to collect and pour one gallon of water into a common five gallon bucket and mark the water line on the outside. Add water in one gallon increments, marking each gallon water line on the outside of the bucket. Now spray water from the tank into the bucket for one minute and confirm the output. If you collect four gallons, then you're calibrated at the desired output. If it is more or less than four gallons, adjust the pressure of the pump up or down and run the check again until the measurement is four gallons. Your spray width is the width of each pass you apply. It is used to calculate your application rate or gallons per thousand square feet. It should be six feet for a person that is five foot seven to six feet tall. For people taller or shorter than this average, their spray width may be less or more than six feet, and that can be compensated for by adjusting your ground speed later. It is important that each lawn professional adopt a spray width that they can maintain throughout the day. Just covering a thousand square foot area is in a specified time is not enough to guarantee success. A uniform spray pattern using a spray gun with a hose reel is almost totally dependent on the person at the end of the hose. Your spray pattern combines all the inputs above along with a hand movement, nozzle angle, and ground speed. The angle of the nozzle should be facing forward. Many times applicators drop their arm spraying at their feet. This creates a Z pattern which typically indicates an improper arm swing. The tempo of the arm swing is important as well. Three arm springs to every step usually produces an even pattern. This means if you're spraying over a weed, you should hit it three times as you pass over it. Next, you should determine your ground speed. To determine your ground speed, measure how long it takes to spray a thousand square feet. An easy repeatable method is to use something called a spray course. A spray course takes 1,000 square feet or any area and puts it in a straight line. By first identifying your spray width, which we now know is six feet, you can divide a thousand square feet by that spray width. This sets the length of your spray course. In our example, a thousand square feet divided by six equals 167 feet. Next, we're gonna determine your spray course. Measure and mark the distance on a flat, dry surface, such as a lawn, asphalt, or concrete. Then using your spray system with only water, Walk the course at a constant pace you can maintain all day, measuring the time it takes to complete the course with a stopwatch. Make sure you maintain the spray width and achieve an even spray pattern. For lawn professionals with a six foot spray width, the course should take 35 seconds to spray. We're targeting 35 seconds for a specific reason that we will discuss later. Ground speed and system output are used to determine your application rate or gallons per thousand square feet. Divide your system output by 60 seconds and then multiply your answer by the time it took to walk the spray course. In our example, we divided four gallons by 60 seconds to get 0 0.067 gallons per second. Then multiply 0 0.067 gallons per second by 35 seconds per thousand square feet. Our application rate is 2.3 gallons per thousand square feet. 
once you have determined your application rate, now you can determine the square footage your tank is capable of treating in your tank's treatable area. Simply take the volume of your tank divided by your application rate. This will determine the area your tank is capable of treating. Let's use a 100 gallon tank for example. By design, this allows you to treat 43,000 square feet or approximately one acre for every 100 gallons you spray. This makes mixing easier since most labels are based on a rate of product per thousand square feet or per acre.